Hi, this is Michael Goldfarb with SideFX Software, and welcome to this introductory course on rigging with Apex. In this course, we'll start with a brief overview of KinFX, as well as an overview on how to prepare your geometry and skeleton for rigging with Apex. We'll do a brief overview of the whole process before digging into the details, such as uh, parameters, properties, tags, Apex auto rig components. And then finally, we'll rig an entire small character uh, and see how it can be saved to disk and then re-imported into Houdini, uh, ready for animation. And to start, uh, we'll talk about the object level, which is where rigging was done up until the release of KinFX in 18.5. And to start with objects, we're going to start with just a camera. Um, it's a camera object. It's here at the object level. And the things that we want to look at here are the fact that it's a node, it has a name, and it has a whole bunch of parameters. Most of these parameters here at the object level don't really have anything to do with being a camera. Uh, these are really properties that are sent to the renderer. Um, here at the object level, uh, you might render with Mantra, uh, with a, a third-party renderer, but things like resolution, pixel aspect ratio, focal length, these are properties that the renderer uses, uh, in addition to sampling, things like that. But as an object, what we're really concerned with is this transform. And here the, the camera object has a translate and a rotate. If we put down a null object, uh, we see that it has a little bit of geometry here in uh, the viewport, and it has another transform uh, with a translate, rotate, and a scale, but it also has a name. And this is what essentially defines an object, because this isn't really a camera, as, as we've said, it's really just a holder of a transform and some properties, just as a null is just a little icon, a little visual represented re representation of something, and that something has a name, and it has a full transform. Moving on, if we look at a piece of geo, right, we have this geometry object. And this geometry object, it has to be stated pretty clearly, this node is not geometry. It is an object because it lives here at the object level. If we go inside this geometry object, we find geometry. But this box is not an object in the Houdini sense. It is geometry. If we go back up to the uh, object level, we'll see that this geometry object has a name, it has a full transform, and it has some special uh, parameters, some properties uh, that are used when rendering. Things like shading, sampling, dicing, how the geometry is to be displayed and how it's to be rendered. And so this is really just a container for geometry, but it is a geometry object. If we move on to talk about something a little more in the world of rigging, we have these three nulls. Again, each of them is an object. They have a name, they have a full transform, and you can display them instead of as the little, um, the little icon, you can display them as a bunch of different things. And here I'm displaying them as boxes. But another special property of an object is that it can be arranged in a hierarchy. And you can see that I've wired the output of null one to the input of null two, output of null two into the input of null three. And so in this network then, these are arranged in a hierarchy. And because they have this full transform, if I rotate one of them, the other ones will follow because we've established a parent-child relationship, a hierarchy. This is not something that you can do with geometry, but you can do it with objects because they have a name and they have a full transform. 
So rigging then at the object level involved creating special objects, and in this case, they are bone objects. They have a transform, and then they have special properties uh, for their the little uh, their icon, basically, which is just a piece of geometry. But it has special properties related to rigging. Uh, in this case, uh, especially these capture attributes. So these capture regions surround the bone, and whatever geometry is within these capture regions is associated with this bone during the capturing process. But like the nulls, they have a name, they have a transform, and so they can be arranged in a hierarchy. So if we rotate one of these, the parent-child relationship is maintained, the parent rotates, and it rotates the child. So this was the state of rigging in Houdini up until Houdini 18.5 and the introduction of Kinefex. But what does that mean? What, what differentiates Kinefex from the object context? And we can now jump into a geometry object. So now we have an object here at the object level. It is a geometry object. And so what's going to be inside this geometry? Geometry. So if we display that, we can jump inside and we have some nodes that were introduced uh, with kin effects. So what do we need? If we refresh our memory really quickly, we can see that we need some objects. They need to have a name. They need to have a transform and they need to be able to be arranged in a parent-child relationship. So that's what Kinefex introduced. We introduced a skeleton SOP, so we can create a skeleton. And if I hit enter in the viewport here, I'll go into the skeleton state. You can see that I can uh, start a joint chain, I can extend the joint chain. But what is really happening here? What are these things? These things are simply points. They are points that have, if we look at our geometry spreadsheet, they are points that have a position. They have, in this case, a color, doesn't really matter. But very importantly, they have these two attributes, a name, and they have a transform. So just like the bones at the object level, these points have a name, they have a transform, which means that with the Kinefex tools that were developed, we can associate these points in a hierarchy, in a parent-child relationship. And because they have their own transforms, if I rotate a parent, the child will rotate along with it. I'm going to pop into, back into the viewport here. And I've split my um, viewport into a top and bottom and I've put in a rig tree and an apex uh, network. And with our skeleton selected, you can see that we have a hierarchy. We have the point here, point zero, and it has the name hip. Then the next point over here, if I can find it, has the name knee, and the next ankle. And as we saw in the geometry spreadsheet, each of these have that name and a transform. And so if I use uh, some of the um, uh, Kinefex tools, in this case, I'm taking the output of the skeleton and I'm just putting it into a poly wire. You can see our rig tree is complaining because the Polywire is showing geometry, and geometry doesn't have a, a hierarchy to show. So I'm just going to minimize this. Turn these guys off. So I've put a polywire through what looks like just a regular curve. And in fact, it is just a curve, three points with two primitives. So I put that into a polywire, and I can create some geometry. And then I've used 
this is the, the bone capture by harmonic workflow where the skeleton is put into a bone capture line SOP. And all this does is create lots of little points that have the proper attributes for capturing. And then I put that through a TET embed and it converts our polywire geometry into tetrahedrons and then adds those points from the bone capture lines. The result of all of this is combined with our original geometry into a bone capture by harmonic SOP. And that creates capture attributes. So now we have a mesh with capture attributes. We have a rest skeleton, which is our original skeleton. And then branching off from that, I've added a rig pose and then just another null to say that this is the animation skeleton. These are then fed into a joint deform because we're not calling these things bones anymore. We're calling them joints because they're here at the geometry level. So I can display that joint deform. And then with the rig pose, I can just clear this out. The rig pose will allow me to select and manipulate these joints. So I can select the hip joint and then I can rotate it. And you can see that by rotating the hip joint, the child of the hip joint, the knee, follows along. And because the knee is the parent of the ankle, the ankle follows along. And so this then is how we've transformed that object level workflow into the geometry world. And the benefits of this uh, may not seem obvious, but the real power here is that this skeleton is just geometry. It's just points. We can look at the geometry spreadsheet and we can see we have three points, just like we usually have in all our other slot SOP level, level workflows. The difference is that these points have a name and they have a transform. And this is what transforms them into joints. And joints are then usable as uh, a rigging system. And you can do some really fun things here. If I put down just the default L system SOP, I get this little tree-like structure. And we can see it's just composed of points uh, that branch and branch and branch. This is not a rig. Uh, you can't use it for rigging. It's not suitable at all for that. Why? If we look at the geometry spreadsheet, all we have are position attributes. We don't have name and we don't have a transform for any of these points. But we can put down what's called a rig doctor, feed that L system into the rig doctor, tell the rig doctor we want to initialize missing name. So it will add a name to any point that doesn't have one. And then down here in transformations, we can initialize transforms. Basically, we're asking the rig doctor to give each of these points a transform. If we display that, nothing changes in the viewport, but if we look at our geometry spreadsheet, we can see that all of these points have a name and a transform. They also have a local transform, but that's uh, not important at the moment. But you can see that they all have those necessary attributes to transform this piece of geometry into a rig. And I could even add a rig pose as I did over here. And then if I enter the viewport into the rig pose state, you can see that now I have all of these joints and I can select one and I can rotate it and all of the children follow along because I've created a hierarchy. And we can look at that hierarchy. If we go back to our rig tree, you can see that we have point zero, one, two, three, and then point three opens up and it has three children. Those have a bunch of children. So we have this full hierarchy here. And this uh, is a rig, basically. Additionally, because these are just points, you can use all of Houdini's 
uh, point manipulation tools where appropriate. So you could put this into a particle system and apply wind to these joints. And then that wind could manipulate geometry if you capture geometry to those points. So this is the power then uh, of kin effects. And so there's plenty of uh, documentation and example files um, available to learn more about the kin effects workflow specifically. Uh, but in this course, we'll be looking at Apex, which is a, another layer uh, in this kin effects world. But it's important to understand uh, that we are dealing, when we're talking about uh, rigging and animation using the, the kin effects workflows, we are talking about points uh, that have just some special attributes that enable this power that we have.